belt and sell it in huge calabash baskets and they'll cut it and you will remove the skin only as a thin parchment and what do you eat it with? we call it a bone heavy palm oil okay and that was absolutely amazing that's palm oil mm -hmm. we've been told it's dangerous for health it isn't so that was a myth it is a myth how about you know, all these other refined oils vegetable oil ah i will run a mile from refined oils okay whether they're vegetable or corn or canola or whatever kind oh, of but oil. those are supposed to be good soy oh gosh no okay so we have this thing turned upside down is what we are saying yeah okay how do we now get back to the true real good diet because no. when you go to the market mm -hmm. all sorts of healthy foods in quotes is what you see now you have a uh, vegetable oil sometimes in plastic bottles and then you have uh, lots of carbohydrates with fiber in them and we think oh this is great so what do we do what we do depends on what we want to achieve and that was a question i asked you earlier when we we're talking there are two reasons for eating you either eat to get calories or you eat to get nutrients mm -hmm. those are the two things that keeps your body alive now people want to know why calories and nutrients don't seem to be the same thing they're not they're completely different so could you would you care to differentiate them for us okay the nutrients contain all of the minerals and the vitamins and the other bits uh, the the phytochemicals that sounds that, like vegetables carrots yes the more color you have the better the yellows and the reds and the greens and the variegated purples each different color means a different phytonutrient the minerals that you find in certain foods the manganese the magnesium the iron all the all, they are all essential nutrients you need them they sometimes act as cofactors for enzyme systems that make your body run now if you eat a diet that has a high level of calories but a shortage of nutrients what your body is going to do is going to demand that you keep eating even though you're eating a lot of calories, you will keep eating until you have satisfied the nutrient base. Okay. And that is why some people can't seem to stop eating. Even though they're the size of a, of a garage door, they will keep eating because the body is still demanding the nutrients that it needs to drive the body system. And you're not getting that from the breads. No, you're not. We'll have to take a, a, a break right now. Wow, look at the time, how it flies. It's already half time and we have to take a break. We'll go for a quick break and be right back. Then you can have your contributions coming. Welcome back. We're discussing food and good health with Dr. Ladeindi. Now it's time for your contributions to come in. You can call 0122068428428. That's 0122068428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428428
Insulin is pro-inflammatory. 99% of all the disease that we know today have a base in inflammation. Sugar is inflammatory. So if you have both together, you're not doing your body any favors. What do we do with vegetarians? There are certain people who will not take these meats, they will not take these fish. How are they going to fill up on, on calories? Vegetarians have a little bit of a problem. And actually one of the things that we've discovered happens with vegetarians really is that they tend to be rather low on certain vitamins. That, for example, I'll use one quick example. Vitamin B12 comes mostly from animal sources. Okay. Most vegetarians are deficient in B12. And there are all sorts of symptoms, symptom, symptoms that develop from that. And we can avoid that with vegetarians by making sure that we give them a supplement that gives them the B12. Okay. We, we have a call coming in. Here is uh, Ralph, I believe. Hello, Ralph. Yeah, hello. Thank you so, so, so much. This is one of the best. And actually, your programs are always focused, articulate, and intelligent. Keep it up. Thank you. My Thank doctor, you. how are you? Welcome back. Thank you very much. I like to travel to the UK. So nice watching. You talk so much about soda and uh, fast food germs. Uh, over the phone, but let's not go into that. I've kind of spoken with you off camera on these things. If this is a killer item, so killer uh, they on fast food joints, what I, I wouldn't want to bring you on the spot of the government and the rest. What will you say about some of these sodas that are in circulation, the fast foods like today? They're celebrating your Valentine's Day. I want to tell you, thousands of sodas are going to be emptied into the system. A lot of people are going to, like uh, my good sister and friend was talking about bread, the consumption level today. If you're talking about diabetes, you're going to have them in what? How do we spread this message? Do you know last week or last two weeks, a friend just went to bed on Saturday, packed up on Sunday morning. The wife was there was nothing. If you talked about calories, I mean uh, cholesterol, the doctor said, and now blah, 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 he was gone. A lot of people are going. A lot of people are going. And in a government that is very sensitive to the welfare of their people, okay, we doctor, are politicking our covert governance. They don't care. So I'm afraid that's all we can take. Get this going. Let's get to the question. How are we going to address this? He's talking about fast food. Soda, I presume he's talking about soft drinks. Okay. That how, you know, how is this going to take, this new doctrine, if you like, going to take hold? I think the one answer short that I will give to this is I will ask him a question. Who is responsible for your health? Is it you? Is it your doctor? Or is it the government? But let me ask you this. Doesn't the quality of our food start from the soil? Of course okay, it does. Okay, so that is not an individual thing. It isn't. We are facing genetically modified food we're facing depleted soil nutrients. Mm -hmm. So maybe he does have a point when he's talking about a collective we doing something about the problem. A collective we will mean that some of us will need to take a step back. I think we need to step back into those ages when we had small communal farms that supplied communities with what... Even in Europe and America now, they're saying eat locally grown organic fruits, vegetables, and even chicken and meat and all that. That's it's things that have not been processed. Exactly. And has, that has not traveled a thousand miles to get to your shop. Right? That is essential. Now, um, we were talking about vegetarians. Yes, they do have some... some they are deficient in some in vitamins. Some yeah. But this, this is what I want to get back to. So you answer the question about how they get their vitamins. Plus, you were saying that meats fill up. They are part of the satiety. Mm -hmm. They are not getting the meats. They shouldn't eat the breads. Mm -hmm. They like the vegetables. How do they get those calories? But before we get there, there's a call. Hello, Amos. Hello, Amos. 
how do we get this calling? So before we get there, it's a call. Hello, Emma. So you get this call. Hello, Emma. Hello, Doctor. Good afternoon. How do we get this calling? So how do we get there? Hello, Doctor. Good afternoon. We can hear you. Good afternoon. I want to ask uh, this question. Uh, fried uh, egg is it better than? Uh, and secondly, are you saying that we should continue eating uh, vegetable oil and continue uh, to use uh, red oil? I just want to. Thank you very much. Because because th th that's somebody who is listening. Thank you very much, Amos. Fried uh, eggs. I do not mind if you fry your eggs. It depends on which oil you use to fry it. Don't use sunflower oil. Don't use vegetable oil. Don't use any of the standard oils. Look for either extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil. Or look for coconut oil. Ah. Or <laughs> At least there's a remedy here. Or look for macadamia oil. Macadamia oil? Yes. I don't think we have from, that here. We do. I have seen it around. Hmm. Those oils are far less likely to burn. You see, the way we cook this in this area, we burn our oils. And the oil then is converted into something that your body is going to struggle to deal with. That is the major problem. Our palm oil is absolutely brilliant for me. But do not start by frying it to death first. And again, that comes to a cultural practice that we need to change. When the Chinese cook, they start with water in the wok. When you're going to cook your stews and you want to use your vegetable oil, please, please, please start with all of the ingredients first and cook them until they're almost ready. Then add your oil at the end. Same with the palm oil? Same with the palm oil. That means you're cooking the oil minimally and you are not altering it. High temperatures alter the oil and they make them into something that you wouldn't want to eat. Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming. You and I know that we cannot finish this topic in one, two or three sittings, but this has been very great. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. It's thank you for being with us. Amos, thank you for your call. Ralph, thank you for your call and your kind words. Have a wonderful day today. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.